Hey there, I am the PC Goblin. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Dark Rock Slim by Be Quiet. So I'm gonna quickly unbox it and then we're gonna test it against my custom loop that I've got on my wet bench. So we're gonna see how good this does cooling my i3 8350K versus how well my custom loop does to see just how good of a value this is. So, comes with instructions. A box. It's got foam. Ooh. This is pretty. Put that there. And then the fan. All right, let's see what's inside said box. Probably just mounting hardware. So I got brackets to hold it onto the onto the cooling fins. Got AMD hardware, Intel hardware, thermal paste, tiniest little bit of it. We're gonna be using this to see just how good it is. And some sort of middle piece. All right, so we'll go over the specs while we're looking, taking a closer look at the heat sink and whatnot, but it's um, height by width by depth is 159 by 127 by 72. The weight is 620 grams. Heat sink is made out of aluminum. Socket compatibility with Intel 1150, 1151, 1155, 1156, 1366, 2011, minus three square. So it should work on X299, X99, etc. Um, ILM 2066, AMD, AM2+, AM3+, FM1, FM2+, AM4. The maximum wattage that this thing can cool is 180 watts. The noise levels at 800 RPM is 11 decibels. At 1200 is 16.9 decibels. And then at full tilt at 1500 RPM is 23.6. So pretty much no matter what, you really shouldn't be hearing this. Ambient noise I think is 30 or 32 decibels. But it's definitely louder than this thing is. The number of heat pipes is 4. The fan is a 120 millimeter fan. Maximum speed on it is 1500 RPM. Like I said earlier, it's a PWM fan. Um, so it's got four pins. And then it says that the lifespan of it is 300,000 hours. It's a lot of hours, man. Sorry I'm cut off a little bit, but this is, this is the subject. So if you don't know, fans blow towards the label. So I'm gonna be putting this on the outside to blow air through it. All right, so just quick note, there's some little rubber pieces on the heatsink. This is what your fan sits on. Not going anywhere. All right, first things first, got to power it off. I'm gonna hit the power switch, of course. I don't know if you guys can see this, but my cooling loop has like stuff growing in it. I don't know if you can actually see what's going on, but there's stuff inside this loop that happened because I wasn't using my test bench for months and I just kind of sat there. Yes, it's got biocide and all the chemicals inside of it, so it shouldn't have that, but it does. We're running the test first with the Dark Rock Slim because I want to use its thermal paste with both this and that. If I run it right now, we're using whatever therm thermal paste that I put underneath that back then. So we're going to quickly undo all of this, put on the Dark Rock Slim, test it out, and then we'll switch back to it. So I'm going to get started now.
As you just saw, we've got the cooler installed. This is just idle temperatures, 33, 34 degrees, nothing really running. It's overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. And the fan speed, I'm not sure this is accurate, but in the BIOS on my motherboard, I've got the CPU fan set to just normal mode. So it should speed up accordingly as the CPU gets hotter and, you know, come down and be quieter as it's not. So for the testing, we're going to be running IDA64 for 30 minutes to see what it does. And then we'll do the same thing with the water cooler when we're done with this. So we're going to go ahead and hit start. And here we go. Already we can see it hop up to 61 degrees, 63 degrees. When I was using the custom loop, I don't think I ever saw it go over 50 or 55 degrees. So it's already doing a worse job than that is. Although still not bad, it's still great temperatures for it. So we'll come back in 30 minutes and see what it looks like. Okay, we're at the 30 minute mark. It's never gone above 66 degrees. Really doesn't like that the CPU is maxed out. Oh, here we go. Almost hit 70. So we had a max of 71 degrees on one of the cores. Oh, looks like we had 74 for a second there. So, not bad. And as for noise, I don't really want to put the mic up to it because that changes the audio, you can amplify it or whatever, but I can't hear it over the power supply fan, which is going a lot faster and louder than it is. So, it's really quiet. And if this was sitting inside a case, I don't think I would have heard it at all. I still think I'd hear the power supply, but Definitely not the cooler. So let's go ahead and stop this. Now that we have the water cooling block back on the CPU, we're idling about 32, 33 Celsius. So that's about what we were seeing. Well, it's exactly what we were seeing with the other one. So now we're just gonna go ahead and start the test again for another 30 minutes and see what it ends up at. All right, so we've hit the 30 minute mark and we're sitting at about 66, 65 degrees. The temperature is kind of all over the place with the water cooling this time around. I think it's due to the thermal paste. Nonetheless, with the same thermal paste and everything, we're seeing about the same temperatures we saw with the Be Quiet. So, minimum of 32, max of 69, so it's a little bit cooler than what we saw with the air cooler. Now that we've got our test results, let's talk about what we saw. Now that we've got the results, there's a few things I want to go over. So the first thing is, I wanted to see just how good the thermal paste is that came with the Dark Rock Slim versus, you know, what you can buy aftermarket. So I put on some Cryonaut Conductonaut thermal paste underneath my water cooling block and tested it out. And I didn't see a huge difference, but I did notice it did drop it a few more degrees. So on my custom loop, I noticed that it dropped it down to 65 degrees for the max temperature, and it was a little bit lower than that most of the time. It was on those hot spikes that it shot up to 65. So not a huge gain, but there is some performance gains there, and you'll see the same kind of performance if you use it on this as well. So if you wanna drop a few more degrees, get the conductor knot along with this, I've got a link to both of these in the description below. But now that we've taken the thermal paste out of the equation, comparing the two, the radiator in my custom loop, it can handle about 800 watts versus the 180 watts that this is rated for. That doesn't mean the custom loop can cool a whole lot cooler than anything else because it can handle 800 watts. What that means is you can put 800 watts of stuff into the system and cool it with that radiator. So you can add in graphics cards and you know even bigger batter CPUs and it can handle that and still give you low temperatures. And that's because there's a difference between capacity versus how low it can drop the temperature. They are related but they are not the same thing. So Unless you're gonna be adding two graphics cards and a really big CPU to cool with this, which is physically impossible, this thing is gonna cool most processors really, really well. And it does it really, really quietly. Like I said, paired with this fan, if I can get that out. Paired with this fan, it made almost no noise. I was really impressed with just how quiet this setup is. Now I can get a quieter setup with a custom loop, but it's really not much quieter and there's a whole lot more complication. So that's just a whole nother win for the Dark Rock Slim. And 
with what we were testing, we were testing with just one fan. You can add a whole nother fan onto the front of it so you can be in a push-pull configuration and it'll cool a whole lot better than it did already. Well, not a whole lot, but it will cool better. <laughs> and I didn't test it because I didn't have another one of these fans to stick onto it to test it with. And if you were to buy this setup, you won't have two fans, you'll have one fan. If that's something you want to see in a future video, you know, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to make it happen. But as it stands, one fan, one cooler, these are the temps that you get. Now let's look at the ease of setup side of things as well. This, you just bolt this on to the CPU and boom, you're done. With a custom loop, you've got to get the radiator, you've got to get hoses, you've got to have the fittings, you've got to have the pump, you've got to have the reservoir, and then you have to put all that together and jam it into your case somehow. A whole lot more complicated to do, and then on top of that, you have to maintain it by draining the loop out, possibly changing out tubes, etc. and you have the risk of it leaking on your system, and then with an air cooler, there's nothing to leak on your system. This will never fail. The only thing that will fail is the fan, and the fan's rated for like a lifetime almost. Not, it's not rated for a lifetime, but I can't imagine you using this fan for as long as it will last. It's a whole nother win for this. Now let's talk about the aesthetics. I don't think air coolers in general look very good, but I do think this looks really good. This all black finish on it, and even the black fans, this looks really good sitting inside your system. Now it's up to personal choice on what you think is better because you can do some really cool looking things with a custom loop, but all in all, this looks really great and it's 65 bucks. Now you can buy kits that are like 250 or whatever that have everything that you need in it, but still, that's way, 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 way more than just the $60 cooler. So that's a whole nother win for this. So what are my thoughts on this? I think this is a fantastic cooler. If you're looking for something simple that it's gonna cool your CPU well and not make really much noise, if any at all, this is what you want. And the whole purpose of testing against the custom loop was just to see how good it was compared to the best cooling system that you can get on the market. Now that's not the best loop, but it's close enough. So with all that being said, I really think you need to take a look at the Be Quiet Dark Rock Slim if you're looking for a great cooler at a great price. And I've got a link to it in the description below if you wanna check it out. It'll help my channel out if you buy it with my link. Doesn't add any extra cost, but it does help me out. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. And I'd really love to know what you guys think about my testing setup and what my findings were in the comments down below. And if you liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you hated it, well, hit the dislike button. And I really hope you wanna see more of my stuff. I've got a lot of stuff coming out, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And before I go, I want to thank Be Quiet for sending me the cooler for review. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time guys.